Welcome to Sema Farms, where we do some of this and some of that. I'm Heather, and I would just want to say Happy New Year to you all. I wanted to put out a video, but I didn't want you guys just staring at me. So while you're listening to me, I do have pictures of what the kids did for Christmas gifts. In fact, remember those tin cans that we made um, in, I think it was July? Well, here they are. They were given as gifts. We stuffed the reindeer full of snowballs, cookies, um, and the little snowman. I don't have a picture of it, but we stuffed um, that tin with uh, homemade dog cookies. Um, and then the other pictures are just some paintings that the kids did as gifts. Okay, so I just wanted to... Um, expand on Melissa K. Norris and Carolyn from Homesteading Family, um, their recent video that they did, the top three most, um, uh, most do things for preparedness in 2022. Um, Carolyn was the first one that I watched and she had said if there was anyone else that, um, they knew that wanted to join in these, um, adding to the list of these three things to go ahead. I'm not a big YouTuber or anything, but I wanted to take the opportunity to do so, um, so that I can start, start putting my, um, putting my channel out there more. So anyways, so to add to their three, um, well, they both did touch upon this, but in different ways and I'm going to add my own touch to this um, but their big focus in fact both of their number one was around food um, and that is the same for mine um, last year I barely grew anything uh, mostly because I had you know little Zach in the spring at, like be very very beginning of spring and it was just too much we did the pigs last year which was a new thing for us um, and we still had the other animals and the toddler and it was just, it was a lot. So we didn't really get to do much gardening last year. Uh, so this year the kids are gonna both going to be walking. In fact, Zach is almost walking as it is at seven months. Um, so I think that, you know, doing a huge garden, in fact, expanding even um, on the ones that we have is definitely a good goal. Um, it is January now, so I plan on trying to put together a plan for um, all these different gardens. Um, I'm going to try to do as many as I can, as well as growing in pots. And I mean, heck, I'll even grow something in an old shoe if, you know, if need be. Um, in addition to these um, extra gardens and stuff, I will be doing a surprise garden. Um, so look for it it in spring. Um, I don't want to say anything more about it because I don't want it to be a little spoiler alert. So I uh, just know that there's going to be something special to do with a garden and um, the video will come out this spring when I get it done. Um, you know, so anyways, again, the gardens really need to be a top priority here um, with everything going on in the world, you know, we just, you know, need to take care of ourselves and all these, you know, store-bought cans, you know, food that I, you know, you, that you buy from the grocery st store. Well, my goal is that um, I want to replace all of those store-bought cans with, um, you know, homemade canned food. And I don't know, maybe that's a little over ambitious, but I want to do as much as I can without setting a specific goal because I never know, you know, what kind of growth season I'll have. Um, hopefully it'll be good. Um, I also don't know what kind of grow season others will have and whatever I can't grow or won't grow for me. Um, I would like to reach out to the local farmers, you know, farmer markets, um, and also just other people in my community, um, and purchase from them. Um, and this also goes along with expanding the livestock. Um, the Bun Buns have already um, started this with uh, one of the does that I had last year. She just had kits yesterday on New Year's Eve. Um, so what a way to start off with 2020 with new Bun Buns. 
Um, so I'm really happy with that. Um, I'm also hoping to add on to dairy goats. Um, this way we can have a dairy source on the farm. Uh, we don't have enough land for a cow, not even a small cow. So, um, you know, I think goats might be the option um, that we go with. Along with the, you know, adding these other protein sources and, and dairy sources too, um, I want to start with the pressure canning. So, you know, pressure canning these meats because there is just too much in the freezer um, and reducing our electricity is, you know, definitely something that we need to do. So preserving it via pressure canning and along with all the other different ways that we um, preserve foods are definitely on that list um, with the garden and, you know, our food in general. So like I said, that, that also includes livestock. Um, and again, whatever, you know, like I said, we, you know, can't do cows here, whatever. I personally do not eat red meat, but my husband does. So whatever, um, you know, we can't raise or grow here, reaching out to those local farmers and other people in the community, which actually brings me to number two, and that is building a community. Now, again, this is something that has already kind of been started. Um, me and a few other people in this local area have started a homeschool co-op, but it really turned out to be something a lot more than just, you know, for, you know, teaching homeschoolers. Um, it, you know, really turned out to be a community where we all kind of get together and we help each other. Um, we actually even started a monthly meeting um, where someone goes and, and teaches something useful and then we also bring things to to barter or sell or, you know, whatever we have, you know, to help each other out. Uh, last month we did something on first aid. This month is, um, you know, learning fermentation for those who don't know how to do it, for those that do, you know, helping others and even sharing recipes. Um, next month, actually, it's going to be my turn and I'll be teaching something about nutrition which I hope to video, but um, we'll see how that goes. Um, you know, just regardless, um, connecting with these, you know, like-minded people has been such a blessing for me. It's, you know, just been so helpful. You know, I'm new to a lot of this, even though I've researched different things for many years. Uh, to actually experience it is a total new yeah. ball game. Um, and so uh, connecting with like-minded people has really, you know, helped me jumpstart all this experience and, you know, lead me on the right path of, of, you know, doing, you know, this lifestyle, which is something that I've wanted for such a long time. So I am so grateful that I finally get to do it, even though I do feel, you know, late to the game. Um, you know, that's what it is, but, um again, feeling late to the game, even though I studied a lot of different things in college. Um, number three has to be, you know, um, building my apothecary. Um, I learned a whole bunch of different, you know, complementary and alternative medicine, you know, different, you know, tr treatments and, and things like that uh, in my college years and even, you know, outside of college. Um, but something that I never really built here at the house is, uh, apothecary. So I really want to, you know, start building upon that this year. I do, I do have some stuff, but, you know, I really, you know, want to put that together and I have already started with some tinctures. Um, currently I have a, a willow root, burdock, peppermint, marshmallow, um, and I, I have like a comfrey oil going. Um, so hopefully soon uh, I might put together a video on, on finishing off, um, you know, those. Um, but they, the, all, all the plant material I had to buy, um, even comfrey, which, you know, I have started to grow last, last year. Yeah, I believe it was last year. Um, but it's just not ready to be harvested yet. So, um, I had to buy that material, which, you know, you know, you do what you can, which, what you have for now, but I really want to, 
um, you know, grow whatever medicinal plants I can. And, you know, in addition to foraging, uh, whatever I can in the local area. So that, you know, is, is part of that goal too, is, you know, really, you know, starting those medicinal plants. A lot of the ones that you harvest the roots for take, you know, at least a couple years before you can harvest it. So getting in them ground and getting them, you know, off to go, um, you know, is, is definitely a go. So those are th the three. Um, although I realize that they kind of, you know, piggyback what Melissa and Carolyn have said in their videos uh, with some, you know, obviously there's variation, of course. Um, so just, you know, to make things, you know, different, um, I did want to add a fourth one. Um, and the fourth one is making clothes. Um, I'm a huge rookie when it comes to this. Um, I know how to crochet and I know how to knit, but I only know one kind of stitch of each. And I can only make squares and rectangles. <laughs> so that's it. <laughs> um, so if I could really learn to do more than just that, that would be awesome. <laughs> But at the very least, I would, um, I do know how to sew with a sewing machine or, or hand sew. So um, I'm a little more than a rookie on that. I do, you know, know a little bit more and, and definitely enough where I could probably start making some clothes. So I think kids' clothes are probably going to be the easiest to, you know, start with first. Um, you know, kids go through so many different clothes and stuff as they're growing and, you know, just getting dirty because they're playing hard and, you know, um, so I think I'm going to start there and I would like to start, you know, trying to make some of our own clothes. Um, I also would like to start making the reusable menstrual pads, which I tried before and I failed. Um, so I want to, to try to do those. So, um, I think that will help us be sustainable too, um, as long as you can get the fabric and materials for it. Um, you know, learning, you know, a new skill is, you know, or even enhancing a skill is, you know, a forever, you know, rather than buying something at the store or getting hand-me-downs, which hand-me-downs are great. We live off of hand-me-downs, but, you know, really, really, you know, getting a hold of a skill is, is definitely a forever thing and something that you can pass down to the kids. Um, you know, and yeah, I do believe that boys should know how to, you know, do this as well. Um, and if it's not his or, or even her cup of tea, then that's fine, but they should definitely know the, the basics. Um, and at Christmas time, um, Zofia got a gift, which will, you know, actually start with this. And it's, um, as you can see in the picture, it is, uh, you know, beads with a string and she's got to sew them through. Um, and right now, I don't even know if you hear in the background, she's a very active, active toddler. Um, so she doesn't usually always have the patience to sit there and string it through the hole, but we will work on it. Maybe she'll get more motivated when she sees me um, sewing more. Who knows? Uh, and lastly, this doesn't have anything to do with being sustainable, but I thought it was worth, you know, while to mention, um, just because it is a kind of like a New Year's goal, um, is that I really want to work on putting out more content on YouTube um, in, on a more regular basis. Um, and also trying to up the quality. Um, I want to thank the person who commented on one of my videos for providing a link that should help with this goal. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. And I appreciate any constructive criticism um, that anyone has. Um, you know, it, it's really nice that we can learn from each other constructively. Um, so even, you know, commenting on each other's comments is is great because you know we're all forever learning so well thank you everybody i hope you all have a great new year and i will see you on the next video thank you bye